Hello, my name is Mike Karras and I want to talk to you today about subsurface utility mapping with Civil 3D. One of the things that I've always kind of despised doing was the calculating of cut values for inverts and translating them to a map. It's very a tedious and time consuming process, especially if you have a map like I have here shown where I have over 200 structures and we want to put them maybe into a table. That's an optional feature. Um, you know, it, it's very a tedious task. And if you don't have a good routine or a good process, it makes it even, even more difficult. So years ago, when Civil 3D first came out, I started working with the point objects and user-defined properties and figured out a neat way, a unique way to really streamline this process and reduce the amount of errors and redundancy that's required for mapping subsurface utilities. And it's not just the points in, in the user-defined properties. There's a lot more that I've developed in the workflow uh, with the labeling and the mapping, you know, but it's all done in Civil 3D. I've seen a lot of the discussion groups and blogs, people create list routines or they actually shoot the inverts with the shot. Um, well, you know, to be honest with you, that's kind of difficult um, when you've got a, a structure that's well over 20 feet deep and it's very difficult to shoot those inverts. So, you know, there's a lot of things that go into this and, you, you know, not one way of, uh, is going to fit all but what we've done is developed a, a unique process here and this unique process allows our field crews to you know shoot the information and collect the information that we need inside the office and then having civil 3d set up to accept this information and streamline that workflow is the the key in the process now i it's very difficult to to probably explain all this in an email um, or even in a short video. So I want to keep this particular video short because I've actually documented this entire workflow, everything that I've done, um, all the setup, the, uh, and the, the entire workflow from start to finish in one of our knowledge apps. Um, and that knowledge app, actually, you, can only, you also will be able to get the template that I have set up um, as well as some of the other features that are available um, that I'm going to show you. So I'm just going to quickly kind of go over this so that you get an idea of what I'm doing here and and there's no reason you can't figure it on your own, but um, by putting them in a knowledge app, like I said, you're, you get a heads up. And those knowledge apps uh, can be purchased um, for anywhere from $1.27 to $3.87, or like well, what we like to say is less than a cup of coffee. Um, so for a few bucks, you can actually get what I'm going to show you here and, and be that much further ahead in your, in your mapping process. Um, so let's kind of get through it and show you what's going on. Um, you saw just a second ago, um, we've got a sketch and this whole process starts out in a field and out in a field it's important to um, always come home with a sketch. As a surveyor I see too many party chiefs, too many uh, companies leaving a job site without a sketch. I know we've got field to finish, I know we try to do everything in the data collector but you know it, it just you can't go wrong with a sketch and, and it's very difficult even for a seasoned uh, mapper to be in the office and try to figure out what the field crew is doing or what it's supposed to look like. I understand we have Google Earth and that's only good is as good as the, the imagery is. Um, so, you know, what is it today at the time of the survey? A sketch is going to tell that. A sketch is going to tell what the party chief saw. So it's critical that you come away with a sketch. I, I'm, I'm adamant pretty much about that with our crews. And uh, a sketch, again, is better than anything you can ever have. Even, even a picture, I think. Um, so, it starts with a sketch. Um, while our crews are collecting the data, what, what they do is they, they'll number the manhole. So when they collect it, you know, they're either doing it robotically or if they're doing it as a, as a team, you know, they'll write the number in paint next to the structure or you know, label it somehow with a keel, um, basically depicting what that number is. After they've collected all their data and done the site work, then they'll come back through and they'll pop the manhole and they'll go down and get their inverts. And on their inverts, they've got the sketch. And on the sketch, they've got the point number. They've got their invert in, pipe size, their in, you know, all their inverts in, and then their invert out, and, um, and all the pipe size go with it. And then also where that pipe uh, goes, you know, what structure does that pipe connect to? Uh, hopefully they can figure it out. When you're in a city like you know, downtown uh, Richmond, uh, Virginia, it's, it's obviously difficult because you've got combined sewer and sanitary, and there's all kinds of stuff going on down there. So... Um, they you know do the best they can and come back and, and verify it. Now you also can see that even detailing it out, like is it full of water, is it full of trash? And then on top of that, what's really handy and helpful um, we found is even having a photograph. You know, so showing a, a photograph now I can see that okay, you know it's pretty deep structure, it's a brick structure. 
and uh, you know supplying this to the engineer is, is maybe an added benefit you know it'd be something they want maybe they go out and they do all the photos um, but we've also numbered these photos and you're gonna see how I tag that to the structure as well um, so again there's a lots of things you can do but key is to have a good sketch now once you have that good sketch what I've got next the next process is to basically import all the data you when you do your field to finish and one of the critical components to this is to have um, point groups and I have a, a manhole point group here that basically all the structures will end up in this point group and I have predefined this in my drawing template so that it automatically happens now with that you also got to keep in mind that um, you got to have a good description key set so there's more to this than just saying hey use the, use the points and use the find the properties in groups there's a lot of setup involved and, and like I said we're providing that in, in our knowledge app so when I right click on the manholes here and I go to um, edit points and bring up the panorama what I'm able to do is basically come in here and you can see that over here to the right I've got my my invert cuts um, and I can you know reorganize this so that it makes it a little bit easier to follow and then what we end up doing let's go ahead and turn on my oops let's get rid of that let's make sure my invert one is cut now what these invert invert one cut values are here and invert two cut values and three and four and five and you have as many as you want now I start with four but in this case we needed a fifth one so we added that um, and I'm gonna hide that one on the end but basically what it allows me to do now is to look at the points I got the point number uh, here's the point number and I just work my way over it's got the elevation on it as part of the points uh, properties and I come over here and I go back to my sketch and I say okay uh, the first invert is uh, a cut is 9.3. The second invert cut is um, whatever, you know, in this case, zero. So, you know, three, four, and five, there is no. So it just has an, an out. Um, the way I set it up is my last invert is always the out. So in this case, that's an invert out. Where in the one above it, you can see that I've got an invert in and an invert out. The invert number two is the out. So what this is doing with the user-defined property is it then is applied through a, an expression all right so under my I'll just go quickly show you here under survey under settings under points under um, yeah user defined properties I've got a couple user defined classes and I've got utility invert cuts and I've set up these user defined properties and then with those user defined properties I then go to my label style and in my label styles under expressions I've got my invert values for calculating the actual invert elevation so it takes the cut value subtracts it from the rim elevation and then gives me another property of the point for um, with the actual elevation and then I use that elevation and you can see here if I come into my uh, sanitary manholes I have a bunch of label styles and if I look at that label style what it's doing I've got four inverts up to five inverts um, if we edit this this label style here what I'm doing is I'm using the invert elevation of the pipe as, um, as a value. I'm not using the cut, but I'm using the, the invert elevation. And what it shows right here, you can see, is that it's actually showing it. So all I'm doing is transferring the cut value from the field notes into my Civil 3D database. And then um, it automatically does the math and it will apply the label now I do have to go in here and switch and change the label style but again by going back to my points and editing it through this this these point groups oops picked the wrong one there let's go uh, edit points here is I look right here and I say okay I've got two cuts there and basically I just changed the label style to have uh, two inverts elevations um, if I scroll down a little bit here's three so I got three invert elevations so again, just by working with this table, I'm able to input all the information, set up all the styles, and then lastly, I would come over here, and then I just got to drag them away. And because they're label styles with drag states, they um, they'll be part of a, um, uh, they'll just drag out and have the leader, and and I'm I'm ready to go. Now you'll see here, this one has a bottom of structure, and that's a note. Now that's another property that I have tied to the um, the point. So if I go to edit points. And we look over to the right, you'll see that I've got a notes. So you can see the notes column. I've got, you know, full degree, whatever it is, you know, uh, 
what it, tunnel combined. So now I've also got a user defined property for notes. Everything's there. The data is there. The data integrity is there. This is, you know, so that's, that's the great part of it. And then if I come up over here, I've got a table and now that table, um, will show the uh, structure number. Oh, one other thing we actually did was we put a picture number. So if we took a picture of the, the structure, we were able to put the picture number in everything that you're seeing right now was automatically done. I didn't have to type in anything. I didn't accept for the cut values, but I didn't have to do anything else. Everything was kind of automatically done by processing the data in and putting in the cut values. Um, so again, data integrity. Um, so the other thing you can do, you can also do this with a spreadsheet. Um, I've got it set up as well. Um, you can, you know, give this to a, um, you know, a admin or a party chief or somebody or even the, the rodman or, or uh, one of the field crews, and they can just plug numbers into the spreadsheet. And then I'm able to actually suck that spreadsheet in and it will populate my point data as well. So there's another benefit to this. Again, I'm doing this with no list routines, no additional add-on software. I'm doing it strictly with civil 3D. Makes it very simple. The other thing that, um, that I've got set up, taking this a step further, is, um, is I've got these tool palettes set up. And what these tool palettes allow me to do is to, um, to actually come in and, uh, I probably don't have it right here, um, but the, the line work mapping uh, basically I have it set up on a tool palette. So all I got to do is pick on that tool. And when I pick on that tool, it will actually, uh, draw the line and I don't have to, um, I don't have to switch layers and stuff. So there's an, it's just another benefit I have. Now on top of that, once I get the line work in, I have, um, additional label styles. And if I go into my, my labels, so if I add some labels here, I've got a bunch of label styles for line and curves. And on those label styles, you see that I've got a bunch of utilities. It's kind of sitting over here behind me. So let me bring this over. If I pull this down, you can see that I've got a bunch of different label styles already set up for my pipes. So all I have to do is if this is a sanitary is I come up in here and say it's a 10 inch PVC. I'll click add and I'll pick that label and you can see that it automatically labels it 10 inch PVC. So again, the whole process is not just about the calculation, but streamlining it and setting it up. And I've done this all set up all with Civil 3D, like I said. And I've got a couple other little features, like um, I've got this other note tool here, because where does that pipe end? Well, we don't know where that pipe ends, so we put a little tilde on the end of it. Well, I have this tool here, which is a pipe end designator. And when I click add, um, move this out of the way, and I grab that line, you can see that it throws the tilde on the end of it. So the very simple, um, the process and setup. So I just wanted to kind of go through that and show you that. Um, so you understand what I mean by sur the, uh, sur subsurface utility mapping. And again, kind of what our knowledge app is going to get into and our knowledge app gets into a lot deeper. Um, I go through it a lot slower. I go through the setup, show you how to configure everything. And from there, you're able to do what we do and really streamline the process. And to me, it's all about data integrity and thinking a little bit different than just drawing dumb text and M text um, makes it very simple. So that is my subsurface utilities method of process of how I uh, go through this. And again, take a look at the knowledge app to get it deeper and, and have access to my template um, and my styles and uh, label styles and everything. You'll, you'll be able to rock and roll right away. Thank you.